Thank you for, for allowing me to, to join you for a minute today. You know, in, in November of 2004, uh, we were uh, loading up on, uh, on C-130s uh, at the airfield right outside Fallujah, uh, somewhere reasonably between Fallujah and Ramadi, uh, and we were going home. And you, you, know, you never really forget that it was my first combat deployment I was going through. And it had been a really long year. And as we got on the, the planes to fly to Kuwait, to switch to a different plane to begin the process flying home, there were a lot of guys carrying two rifles. And all we wanted to do was get home, because we had made it. And our plane went from Fallujah to Kuwait. We switched to a commercial charter. We went from Kuwait to Germany. Then we were supposed to go from Germany to Ireland to refuel. And in Ireland, something on the plane broke. And so we had to sit there now. People say, well, that sounds great. You sat in Ireland for five hours. No, we, we sat in an empty terminal in Ireland for five hours. Um, but it delayed our, our next flight. We were supposed to arrive in Bangor, Maine, uh, first place we touched home in the United States around 10 p.m. Uh, we ended up landing around 3.30 or 4 in the morning. And they said, get off the plane while we refuel. We'll get back on and, and we'll do it. And I'll never forget for the rest of my life, I will never forget that at 3.30 in the morning when we walked off that jetway, that it was lined with Vietnam veterans. They waited all night long to be there to welcome us home. They gave us hugs, they gave us their phones, they said, call your families. And I remember being struck by how meaningful that was. That a generation of veterans in America turned their back on when they came home and did not welcome home weren't bitter at a generation that was welcome back. They weren't angry about why didn't I get that. They said we made a promise that we would welcome everyone home. And they sat there all night long waiting until our plane arrived. Because even though we question what the hell was the point of that? Why did we go there? What we endured was to make a bad situation worse and those questions are a soul-wrenching daily part of so many veterans who served in failed wars we should have never entered. But what we had was each other. We had each other. And we had the basic belief that everyone comes home. And when they come home, you welcome them home. And that kept us whole. And that is a bond that transcends any generation of veterans. But the reality is the injustice of not bringing everyone home, that injustice is something that doesn't allow us to be whole. And so when you look at the pictures on these murals, these are not just individuals our country has turned their back on. They're not just saying that, that we're not honoring our commitment. It's not allowing any veteran to feel like we made it home. When those I served with in Afghanistan and Iraq are not allowed to come home, we feel incomplete. And there is something so devastating about this particular injustice because a country that says if you're willing to die for your country, you're willing to die for your country, you can be a citizen and you can say. And no part of the founding of America was ever rooted in where you were born. It was rooted in the commitment you were willing to make. And every single one of these folks on these murals, and the hundreds of deported veterans spread out across the world, they loved this country enough they were willing to take an oath and say, I will die for it. And in exchange for that, we made them a promise. And that promise was citizenship. And then our government failed to fulfill its promise. And in exchange, they've been deported. And we've got to bring them back. We have to bring them back. And I don't care if someone says, oh, they committed a crime. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, they did. They did. And the crime is absolutely irrelevant. If that crime is so horrendous to deserve deportation, then deport every single damn American who committed the same crime. But if you're not going to deport someone who just happened to have been born here, wasn't going to serve, wasn't going to sacrifice, wasn't going to die. If you're not going to deport them, then not these either. And so we have to continue to fight.
And I want to thank the folks that have been in this fight for a long time. There's a lot of groups, there's a lot of organizations, there's a lot of individuals that were fighting for this before it became better now. Before they made documentaries about it. Before politicians started saying we need to do something. And those individuals paved the way. In the Marines, we always said the first one through the wall gets the bloodiest. Right? You gotta hit that wall and you gotta crack it open. And you gotta get people talking about it. And it was a number of years ago someone brought it to my attention. And I said, oh my God, this is an injustice. And so we joined with those folks who had been advocating. We fought for the pardons. We fought for the state legislative changes. We fought for attorneys. And we successfully brought home a handful. But at the end of the day, this is going to require federal action. And so to have the President of the United States and his administration come out and say, this is an injustice, it's wrong, it has to change, is the first time a president has said that. And President Biden deserves credit for acknowledging the issue, but now we have to hold this administration accountable to make sure that they fulfill their obligations. And yes, we want to get folks VA benefits where they are, and yes, we want to get them help, but at the end of the day, there's one goal, and it's bring every one of them home. Everyone. Everyone. Because right now, these deported veterans, they can come back home. They can. When they die, in a foreign country, we will bring their body back across. We will go to a military cemetery. We will drape that casket with a flag. We will give them a 21-gun salute, play taps, a color guard will fold the flag, and someone will get down on a knee with the family and say, we appreciate and value and honor the service of your loved one. With an asterisk. It says, but not enough to let them actually live here when they were alive. And so it is time for everyone, whether you started in this effort decade ago or more, whether you're new to the cause, to demand that the federal government fulfill its commitment and its mission and its charge. It is not just for these veterans and their families who are deported, it is for every veteran to close that wound that we brought everyone home. And I thank you so very, very much to our VFW post here for highlighting it, for the mural, for everyone that's been involved, the powerful words that we heard earlier. Now is the time to take action and get involved and let's right this wrong and move forward. Thank you very, very much.